What's going on, Workforce? Brian here. And how about we dive into a discussion regarding Yoshi P's relationship with the future of Final Fantasy XIV, the rumors about XVI, and Final Fantasy in general. Coming out of Japan and over on Reddit this morning, uh, there's a discussion going on right now talking about Yoshi P's relationship based off of a tweet, based off of some translation uh, from LiveDoor.jp in this blog. I'll include the links in the description below if you want to go check them out for yourself. But there was some confusion. Reddit officially kind of saying at first, like, hey, Yoshi P says that he's actually not the director of 16. But ultimately, when you go look at it, and we got the, you know, everybody kind of talking and breaking down, people who actively speak this language saying that that's not what is being said right now. It says that Yoshi P is still going to be in charge of Final Fantasy 14 for at least a few more years. And I think this is where the discussion is going to be had. So as a part of this, I wanted to give you guys this information uh, and I want to get your thoughts on this obviously these rumors and uh, obviously Yoshi P's relationship with Final Fantasy 14. Um, you might be surprised there are mixed feelings about Yoshi P and one of the things that we'll do in this video I haven't done a community feedback in a while I want to dive into your comments uh, that you guys left on that video talking about what you guys want to see with Final Fantasy 16. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun I've really missed doing a community feedback so I do apologize that it's been so long since I've sat down and uh, just kind of gone over your comments with you guys. Um, it, man, it, it's been, I feel, a couple of months for me since I've done this. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but I first wanted to give you guys this information and this context because it doesn't say, he doesn't come out and say that, no, he's not the director of 16. He does say that he's going to continue to work on 14 and to wait for an official announcement, which if the rumors are true, uh, maybe that's going to be here in a few weeks, uh, if, if not sooner, you know, in that regard. So we'll have to wait and see what, what happens with the future of Final Fantasy XIV. Um, so where this is important and where you're going to see, uh, you know, some of the debate is coming in is that uh, there is a running theory that Yoshi P, you know, might not do well on a brand new project. Like we know him only from saving Final Fantasy XIV. I think that the best way forward that we can, you know, as a as a community, uh, we should root for his success and the success of whether it's 16 or some uh, another IP. But we'll keep it in the mindset of 16, um, at least until we hear otherwise. And yeah, it, it's true. Like he could be just the best person at saving failing games. But I think if nothing else, with his work and what he did for Final Fantasy 14, uh, we owe him the hope and the the well wishes that he could successfully create a brand new game from the ground up lead it into completion which is no easy task i know we love to play games and i know it's uh it's it's fun and awesome when they're great and when they suck it always you know it's never any fun and people are like oh if they only did x but to take a game from nothing and to i mean hell to take a game from failing and bring it all the way back you know it's like it this is hard work and so with yoshi p whether he is or is not uh, the full-time director of Final Fantasy 16, and whatever that is, whether it's an MMO or single-player game, uh, I'm definitely rooting for his success. I think uh, that would ultimately benefit uh, Final Fantasy fans all around the world. However, uh, let's go ahead and dive into your comments because there are some thoughts and there's some feelings regarding this. And Metal uh, Militia here starts off with uh, Yoshi P uh, is the best part of this rumor. And Michael, if you guys don't know Michael, hey Michael, I don't know if you're watching, uh, says not so sure about that. And there's a context to this is that, uh, you know, when Michael goes on saying that he didn't enjoy Stormblood uh, and Heaven, Heaven's Word was the pinnacle of Final Fantasy XIV. You know what? Like, it's perfectly fine to have, you know, positive and negative feelings about any particular expansion uh, over all the life of Final Fantasy XIV. But again, I think that I uh, shouldn't really all chalk that up to it because what's interesting about Michael's comment here is, hands down, if Heaven's Word was the pinnacle, of Final Fantasy XIV. Well, what happened? What was going on around Stormblood? What was going on around, like, uh, you know, Shadowbringers? Well, that's all when this new project started back in 2016. And we, um, you guys, if you haven't seen the artwork here, it's just so incredible. Finally found another high quality version of it. So I made sure I'd save that to my desktop background so I can see it on the daily. So just kind of keep in mind that obviously Yoshi P is still a human being and he says that unless he gets sick or just randomly killed, you know, <laughs> that's what he says, at least according to Google Translate. Uh, again, links will be in the description below, uh, like right down in here. Yeah, it was just it was kind of crazy. Um, you guys can go read that for yourself. But like unless that happens, like he really has a passion for Final Fantasy 14. And if 16 happens to be an MMORPG, an online RPG, 
uh, that could end up being something that continues to carry this forward. Now, what does that mean for 14? Uh, I don't think it means they're going to abandon 14. I think you're going to see, just like with Final Fantasy XI, they continue to support it. And as the community plays and responds to it, I think overall you're going to see them, of course, they're going to keep supporting it. Now, will you see leaps and bounds like you would hope? Like a whole new graphical package, which Yoshi P's talked about numerous times, like the amount of work it would take to get rid of those PS3 assets and bring them up and forward uh, into the game itself. No, I don't think you'd see that. I don't think you'd see things like that. I think that's where they would say, hey, we have this new MMO for you if you want to have that visual fidelity and that quality uh, versus this. And they would just kind of work within the ecosystem that they, they have. Um, I wouldn't call that maintenance. I would call that essentially, yeah, I, I could still see them releasing expansions as long as there was a demand for said expansions. So just give it time. Uh, nothing to really worry about here. Um, at all because you know I think Final Fantasy 14 as we've seen and we covered uh, just the other day uh, you know the number oh it was actually on the Crystal Core podcast if you guys haven't seen it link in the description Yoshi like they talk about the MMO numbers like it is actually a, so much Square Enix news and right now they're really winning big I'll include a link in it Ginger Gaming Radio please subscribe <laughs> if you haven't already and if you have thanks you know appreciate it so let's go ahead and uh, Sky uh, Lex Tor says I agree don't tell me anything about it unless it's coming soon and for, uh, for them, it's 12 months or less. And I say, yes, a human being, awesome name, by the way, human, uh, <laughs> uh, prefers the four to six months from announcement to release. And I can totally uh, get behind that as well. Now, Rico here says, play Bloodborne. It's more offensive oriented than Souls. The Lovecraft influence is also great and the weapons are fewer, uh, but way more awesome. And I know a lot of people have really enjoyed those games. I've actually never played a Souls game. And some people I think even pointed out later in the comments talking about how some of Final Fantasy, like the original, like uh, that, that stress, that being in the dungeon. I remember being like in a, in like a dungeon um, and it's like trying to get to that save point or trying to just get out because you're running low on materials, like you're just really trying to survive and kind of having that, um, I don't know, a little bit of tense gameplay might be what they're looking for. Final Fantasy XI, I would say, in my mind, even though it's slower in a different you know, combat style than an action game like Souls, uh, would have that. And maybe that's the theme that they're going for, something a little bit more hardcore, maybe something a little bit more casual. Ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. Um, now, bring it back around to the kind of the three... Um, <laughs> the three pieces here is that if they did add 16 as an MMORPG, uh, I think that could fit in very well with the overall pro product lineup. However, when we look at the shifting market that we see within the video game structure itself, I think if they are going to add 16, and I think in order to better serve the community, that's ultimately where we would have to see some form of universal subscription we kind of have the Krista in a way that you can kind of purchase and then use it here there or whatever so I would think that maybe we would see some kind of I don't know unification between 11 14 and whatever that the next game in the kind of series would be so that as a player like as somebody who's like actively playing 11 right now um, it could be just as easy as jumping from A to B to C depending on the content cycle and again in the podcast we kind of talk about like if you look at the money that they make every year every two years right now they are they, they have a really good year uh especially mmos a lot more subscribers you know sales of the expansion pack and then in the odd years there isn't so to find something that could kind of fit in those those odd years and those gaps uh wouldn't be a bad thing in my opinion but we'll have to wait and see uh sin 606 says i honestly want yoshida to be able to sit on top with something that he's made instead of fixed some people are great at solving problems and some are better at creation. I wonder if his run will be loved by the masses. And that's ultimately the question. I think he deserves it. Like when you when you think about it, like whether he is able to deliver an amazing Final Fantasy game uh, from the get-go, from the start, whether it's an MMO or you know, single player kind of experience or even some kind of hybrid of a single player game that does have some multiplayer elements. I think if anything, he deserves that opportunity to make that game based off of what he's already done and his involvement, especially at the start of this video where it's like he's still gonna be involved with Final Fantasy XIV, it makes sense. He's been doing the producer and director role and the best thing for XIV is to have some form of handoff. Uh, you know, have that ability for him to create and mold and you know bring about like great talent within Square Enix, within his own team uh, that will ultimately benefit all of us in the long run because again he you know we are all in you know finite not to get all morbid on us but uh you know that ability for that him to sit here and say hey great i can work on these things 
uh, and to continue to have his influence as a director, as somebody who's overall the whole thing, and to have people who are great and talented uh, rise up and really bring Square Enix into a whole new era of game development. Now, Seb here says, I'm sorry, but I need turn-based, like old school Persona, uh, Persona 5 did it, Dragon Quest did it. I don't need Dark Souls or Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff. It's okay to be more accessible, but we, us, hardcore fans, need to have something reminiscent from the past. I do wish everyone uh, to have what they want, but that's just my opinion. And it's perfectly fine. Um, you know, great opinion. I replied like, hey, have you been, are you checking out Bravery Default 2? Uh, that's that, it really is a Final Fantasy game. It is, you know, turn-based. It's got a couple things going on for it. Octopath Traveler, also just a phenomenal game that I'm really enjoying. I, I need to finish it. Like, I just, you know, need to figure out how to finish games. Like, outside of the fact that I'm just, I think, I love playing games. <laughs> and so it's like, I really want to play a lot. Um, so, in that regards, like, yeah, let's let's talk about 16. Let's talk about it. like imagine if it went from a turn-based 15 action. Uh, it seems that more and more things are going action. And as somebody who's grown up with Final Fantasy from turn-based that really had that tactics, really had that strategy in terms of having to address certain boss fights with your party to going into something that's more action-oriented and, and combat-based, I think action does draw a greater uh, sense of you know of people. I think one of the things when you look at like what kind of who is your market for this game. Um, and six and Final Fantasy as a whole um, really can always just kind of reinvent itself. I, I hear a lot of good things about Seven Remake. Chris really is enjoy has been enjoying it. I'm waiting for you know another system, uh, PC or maybe PS5 or Xbox. Who knows? Whatever whatever comes first, and I can actually sit down and play Final Fantasy um, Seven R. So all that being said, is I, I'm perfectly fine with them reinventing it. But there is obviously demand for that within the Final Fantasy community. And ultimately, it would be interesting to see if they did that. Um, they've done it before. Final Fantasy IX, which is beloved, and I've been actually replaying, um, it's beloved. And it's it's beloved because they kind of did go take a step back. They had seven, they had eight, really kind of pushing it forward visually. Then they decided to scale back, and I think they really nailed it, like both in tone, delivery, and just how the game plays visually. It's a, still an impressive game all these years later. And I think it can also, that also derives from the art style. But you see them kind of going back to the four man party. You see it obviously, you know, turn based and kind of a different kind of more RPG mechanic system, very fantasy based uh, story and world that's all kind of set up. So I, I'm not, I don't, I definitely agree with, with Seb here. You know, it's like I would love to see what a modern looking Final Fantasy game that was set up like a turn based RPG would look like. I don't know if that would be a mainline game now because again it's like there's just a lot of work they're always trying to push the bubble and change it up however at some point where you're like action 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 you know changing it up could be a turn based or they could always do something like that but if it is an uh, if it is an mmo i would i wouldn't uh, expect them to have it as an as a turn-based mmo but you never know um, fat nerd <laughs> says tactics, tactics is the correct answer. Well done, Brian. Thank you. I've been actually playing it on blue stacks recently and it's pretty easy and to set up. I was surprised uh, ultimately by how convenient and easy that is. So I know I rail on mobile games, uh, and just for the fact that they're, they're isolated to the device. And I tried to, you know, I downloaded because I, I purchased it through the Android, which I hadn't before. So I own it now. And then I have an Android phone device. Um, that I use for testing and it does my saves aren't there and that's where I was like oh I need this back in my life whether it's on Xbox or on some kind of cloud service like that literally needs to be um, the thing now since uh, 606 says Brian name dropped and picked my favorite pressed how cool I said it <laughs> I completely ruined any cool cred with the, my response there uh, death monkey says can't wait to learn about this new IP address uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun when the way I miss say things. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, Bad Day, if you can't handle the announcements teasing you, it's safe to say you're a hard fanboy. If you don't know what I'm talking about right there, you did not make it far enough into the video, maybe go check it out and rewatch it and uh, and hopefully laugh at my, uh, my lack of ability to communicate effectively in society. Uh, Bree Jordan says, cannot wait. I hope it's not Dark Souls though, uh, but thanks for the news. 
and then Kung Fu follows that up. I'm kind of with you on that. I got DS vibes from the Cloud Swordplay Final Fantasy VII R, and I loved it. I love those comments because they are amazing. Thank you guys for your comments. And Bree's just such a wonderful person. We've gotten to know each other through a couple comments. So hi, Bree. I don't know if you're watching this, but uh, your name's awesome. She has the same name as uh, my as my niece. That doesn't make her awesome just because of that relationship. It just makes her uh, unique <laughs> in my experience. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we don't obviously know. Like these are all rumors and speculation. The the thing that threw me off was steampunk because again, like this is what has been shown on the site. Like if anything, who knows what this will ultimately be? But it could be. This could be something like the world that was a fantasy that eventually evolved into a steampunk kind of world. We don't know. And honestly, I'm all for finding out uh, more and more. And then uh, Andrew just saw my upload on the video. Thanks. <laughs> That's talking about. Obviously, what's going on in our world, more of a vlog. We're going to keep this video focusing in on um, just games, just something, a way that we can escape and hopefully have a good laugh. Uh, Joel follows up tactics and six, ha, huh, the best. Sounds like good news, though. And uh, Fat Nerd actually thinks those are his top two as well. And uh, only the facts here, my top is tactics, though. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV has its moments, guys. Like, honestly, there have been moments in the stories. Shadowbringers is, uh, is there. Uh, I think Heaven's Word is there for me, where it definitely falls, like, in my top two. Like, I think with Shadowbringers and the story, it definitely was there. Uh, the, my list is a little fluid. And one of the things and the reason why uh, on the podcast, uh, which you should totally check out, plug again, um, I, I'm talking about why I think it's important for me to replay the Final Fantasy games, especially when it's been decades since I've played them. Uh, is to experience them as an adult to so see if my reaction to these games um, are different now that I'm in a different place in life. Now that I have kids, now that it, um, there's all this other stuff going on in the world. Like, do I read these games differently? Do I experience these moments that I remember or think I remember? I think Final Fantasy IX is the reason, especially that it, the fact it's on Game Pass was like, oh my gosh, like, I think I remember this game but it, in reality, like I, I remember the feeling of the game. Like I remember the ca characters. I remember some of the beats, but I don't really remember the game. And so it's important, especially if I'm gonna sit here and, um, I, I don't know, I just think, just like a good book, like you go back and you should go back and read it. Probably not every year. I don't have that kind of time, um, but we'll have to go out for that. Uh, Feral Forever says, watch out Dark Souls is uh, the Final Fantasy of the Super Mario Brothers series. Man, I need some coffee to wake up. <laughs> I'm gonna say, love that one. Um, uh, call yourself a pretty, uh, pretty uh, boy, fanboy, or honest fanboy, and that's just in regards to me uh, saying hard fanboy in that regards. Uh, Lukey says, oh, you like Final Fantasy Tactics, Brian. Uh, do you like 12? Tactics is actually supposed to be in the same universe as 12. 12 is great. Actually, I really, really love 12. When 12 came out, uh, I was uh, working. I had my own like apartment. This is before I met my wife, and I'd get off work. I'd go pick up some Chick-fil-A because it was right next door. I think this is where I gained. I, I think I probably put on like 20 pounds by playing through 12 because it's like off work. Oh, Chick-fil-A. I don't feel like cooking the night. Uh, not the best choices, guys. Like it's delicious food, but not the like obviously the best. I'm not surprised that I gained weight. Um, and then I would go play uh, play through 12. Just like though, like typical Final Fantasy games for me. I played through 12, took a big break, came back a year later. And, uh, and ended up finishing it and really enjoyed it. And so I think it's coming to Game Pass. I actually do own it on uh, on PC and was playing through it. And if it does come to Game Pass, because then I could, you know, just... It's more that I can play in different areas. And as soon as it comes to, like, xCloud, boom, I'm there and ready for more. Now, we'll wrap up with this. And actually, there's two comments here I want to wrap up with. Because one's kind of an update to keep everybody up to date on what my status is. Uh, Frank says, any news on Final Fantasy 14 for Xbox? None. In the sense that we know it's coming. Yoshi P has commented on, you know, good working relationship with Phil, but they haven't announced whether it's coming, you know, tomorrow, this year, Series X, in a year's time. And uh, we do, you know, know that it's been running on Xbox internally at Square Enix, which is great because that, you know, that's awesome. Um, we don't know. Uh, we, the last update was that Yoshi P said that he doesn't see that it's going to be integrated with Game Pass. Uh, namely because of the subscription model of 14, um, but we're seeing Game Pass offer perks and things like that. So we don't have a date, but as soon as we do, I will probably cry into the mic and camera, and I do apologize if you guys watch that video. <laughs> the first one, there's tears. There'll probably be tears when we have a date, or at least when I can actually install and play it. It's going to be a little surreal, and I think it's those moments that you kind of work hard for that you get, that, uh, that end up being the best. So 
Uh, Gabriel, a great name, the name of one of my kids, uh, says, you can, uh, can you post a, an update warrior controller guide and a dancer controller guide for Final Fantasy XIV? I'm very lost about those classes. And right now I'm playing 11 and I'm almost 99 blue. I'm, I hit 90 on blue mage and that's where I'm really finding a lot of fun and joy. Uh, my plan is to hit Final Fantasy XIV really, really hard uh, here as soon as we get a date for 5.3. If 5.3 is going to, let's say, be in July, start of July, middle of July, hopefully not the end of July, but whatever that date ends up being, uh, that's going to be kind of, I'm going to set a couple of weeks before that date to come, you know, back and hit Final Fantasy 14 real hard. Uh, so that way I can, you know, have, make the most out of it um, and get and, and try to finish off these uh, these classes, these jobs and the controller guides. So I will actually get this. I decided that I'm going to go ahead and release kind of an intro to Dancer, just like here's Dancer at 60. Here's the layout. I put a lot of time into it and, and then I pretty much I put out a poll. I was like, hey, did you like the intro to Gunbreaker? Everybody's like, no, just go and level to 80. And it's like, honestly, it's going to be a while until I hit Dancer. I'm um, going to finish Gunbreaker. I'm going to go f uh, do Black Mage. Then I'm going to do Warrior. So that will finish off my tanks, that will finish off my casters, and I've already that will have all the healers done. And then it's just going to be a matter of the range DPS and the melee DPS, which I already have machinists, so it would be bard and dancer, uh, and then obviously all the all the melees. And so um, not all I did samurai. I guess I I'm getting close. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to hopefully try to hit that, get those things knocked out uh, over the summer because we have a couple you know games coming out this fall that I want to spend some time with and play. And more so just kind of um, as an update I know uh, several people ask about controller guides uh, and they take a lot of work and so uh, I really enjoy putting in that effort and work but also at the same time I've really enjoyed playing Final Fantasy 11 Minecraft Dungeons has been phenomenal Fantasy Star Online 2 has been phenomenal and just a question of if you guys made it this far in the video that I'd love to know uh, several people on stream were asking uh, hey, would I like to? They wanted to see me do a versus video talking about the differences between Final Fantasy XIV and Fantasy Star Online 2. Uh, so, if you'd be interested in that as a video, um, a sound off in the comments below, and then b let me know if you'd like to see that on Ginger Prime or on Work to Game. Uh, typically, uh, you know, I could post anywhere, but it does help change out how I do a video. Uh, if you guys have seen Ginger Prime stuff, it's edited very differently. I really enjoy making those. I also enjoy sitting down in front of a camera and talking to you guys this way as well. So regardless, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. And that will also let me know that you made it to this point in the video. Um, guys, there's probably a thousand more comments I could sit here and do. And I would love to do these uh, more often. Uh, if, hit, if, you, if you feel like you want to see more community feedbacks, hit that like button, share this out. Uh, and let me know in the comments as well. Like, hey, I want to see more community feedbacks. I love doing these things, and I do apologize that it's, I don't know why I'm looking at my watch, like it's going to tell me, like, it's June. Okay, so <laughs> um, it's June, and I will, uh, it's, yeah, it's been too long. So I'm going to sit down and uh, put those out for you. Guys, if there's any more Final Fantasy news this week, which I doubt because it's Thursday, and typically game, you know, that's, news ends up being in the front of the week um but if it happens i'll be sure to update you guys here love your faces love you guys very much hopefully you're having a fantastic day and i'll see you in my next video but until then i forgot what i was gonna say ba -ba -da -ba. thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed uh this video is sponsored by me if you guys like uh podcast and long form content i hope you check out ginger gaming radio link will be in the description of this video below so if you're still watching this video thank you and check out the new channel for more content and hopefully you enjoy. Thank you.